Hey, it's Kyle here, and today I'll be reviewing the library book by Susan Orlean. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. If I mispronounce that, I apologize. Uh, before I start my review, as always, if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the support. And with that little plug out of the way, I'm excited to get started with this review. Because so far, of the books I've read in 2021, you know, we're about recording this in June, so we're about, uh, you know, at halfway point. This is by far my favorite book I've read this year. I really loved it. And first, I kind of want to do a little background on how to discover this book. Um, I was actually getting a Christmas gift for somebody that I've known a long time. A friend I know really loves reading and um, also has an interest in libraries. And I happened to see this book in the nonfiction section. The title first caught my eye, and I picked up and read the back of it. I thought, this sounds I think my friend would enjoy this as a Christmas gift. So, got it to him, sent him off to him, and then. I think in the back of my mind, I was like, you know, that book sounds kind of interesting. And so, like, a few months later, I went to the bookstore with a, a gift card I'd got, and I was, um, specifically knew I needed some new nonfiction book, and I was like, you know, that book I got as a gift a few months ago that I haven't read for it, so I'm like, let me look that up, and luckily, they did have a copy, so I was able to get this book, and I'm really glad I did. I absolutely love this book. Um... So one thing, this is, I'll say, one of the few times I've ever read a nonfiction book about an event that I had no knowledge that have taken place. So I was going completely with zero knowledge. Um, and the event this book focuses on is the burning of the um, Central Library in um, the Los Angeles library system, which happened in 1986. It's the biggest library fire in American history. Um, close to a million books were destroyed or damaged in the fire. Massive fire destroyed so much valuable books, artifacts, uh, all sorts of types of objects, and once they're gone, they're irreplaceable. Um, and as somebody who loves reading and loves libraries, uh, hearing about the damage that this fire caused was, in a lot of ways, heartbreaking. Um, but I had no knowledge that I don't, and I never remembered hearing about this event before, which is not surprising. It happened when I was three years old when this fire happened. Obviously, I lived in Georgia, uh, nowhere near California, it's obviously a library fire um, in L.A. Probably would it be something I would hear about when I grow up. Um, but one thing this book did point out is one reason why this event was not even covered as much in the national media um, is uh, when it happened was uh, very soon after this library fire happened, the nuclear incident at Chernobyl took place and kind of dominated um, the news coverage, which is not surprisingly, because obviously people might be more interested in about a uh, nuclear disaster that <laughs> might destroy the world versus a library fire in Los Angeles, even though it was the biggest library fire ever. Um, so it's kind of interesting to kind of learn about this event and the story behind it. And also the thing I really love about this book, uh, it really explores the history not only of the Los Angeles Library, but libraries in general and how they've changed throughout the years and the different services they provide. It really made me fall in love with libraries all over again. Uh, I will mention one reason I love to read so much is directly because of a library program. I grew up on a farm in um, Georgia, and the closest uh, city um, to where I grew up was about a 30 minute drive. And so that was the closest library. Um, so during the summer when I wasn't in school, um, there wasn't really an easy access for me to get books. Uh, happened to be the area I lived in, there wasn't even any bookstores, you know. The extent of bookstores in the area I live was like the small little book section that like the Walmart or the local grocery store would have. Um, so not a huge selection of books. The closest real bookstore was in a mall that was about an hour drive away. My mom um, didn't really like driving. She'd actually only got her driver's license as an adult, so she didn't really like driving long distances. Um, so she would really try to avoid driving as much as possible. Um, so really did a good chance, um, you know, to, to, to go either the bookstores or the actual physical library that much during the summer. Um, but what our library system had for people that are in more rural areas was the bookmobile, which if your community did not have a bookmobile, in our case it was like a little minivan, but some would be bigger buses, and they just would have a lot of books on the bookmobile, usually geared more towards kids, at least in my community's case, and they would have a designated parking spot in kind of a certain area, so everybody that lived in that journal knew, like, oh, if I go to the spot, the bookmobile will be here on this day from this time. And so when I wasn't in school, that's how I got access to 
um, books. And I really remember as a kid being super excited to go to Bookmobile and pick out what books I was going to read. And I really is a big part of why I fell in love with books so much. Um, I'm still passionate about libraries to this day. I'm actually a um, volunteer with our local Friends of the Library um, organization that supports our local library system that does fundraisers and stuff like that. So I think I was primed to really love this book. So with that being said, let me get in a little bit more about the book explorers. Like I said, one part of this book does explore the history of the library system in L.A. and the different leaders it had and how the library evolved over time. Very fascinating to kind of read that history and kind of view like what libraries were viewed as in the 1800s versus, you know, in the 1920s, 1930s, to the 50s and 60s to present day. And it's really one of those things... That once you read the book, well, that makes sense. This is how much library kind of evolves in society and kind of fills the needs society has at that time. Um, but until you read it, it's like, oh, I never really thought about that. You know, the different ways libraries were perceived. Like when this, when the Los Angeles Library was first started, libraries were kind of viewed as more, almost like a private reading club for the rich and the elite. Um, there was actually a membership fee that was fairly expensive. Um, Whereas when the library system was opened up to like, oh, you don't have to, you just get a library card and the library card's free and anybody can run it and it kind of democratized the library and then the various services the library provided changed or anything from, you know, today having computer sections um, or renting out DVDs and movies. Um, some libraries have maker space, all that type of stuff. It's very fascinating kind of that, this part of the book that kind of explores the, the evolution of the library system. Um, Another part of this book that kind of focuses on the actual events of the fire and the investigation. Um, once you get these, all these first hand accounts of the people that were working in the library, the firefighters, and then people associated with the individual who became the main suspect as the arsonist, because this fire was at the time believed to be started by arsonists, and it kind of evolves into this case. Um, and this is not really spoiling anything because it gets into it early on. The person that was the prime suspect was never convicted and actually never charged. Um, but they're still, he's still kind of the prime suspects, even though um, he was never officially charged. But now there's even doubts, was it actually arson? Was it accidental fire? Who knows? Um, the book also focuses on how the community in Los Angeles rallied around the library to kind of save the library. Uh, when the, the fire was put out, um, thousands of people came to the library as volunteers to kind of help take any books that were still left out of the library and begin the process of trying to save them because all the books in the library, even if they had been burnt, they'd been drenched by water. So they, the technique that apparently, which I did not exist in when a book's been drenched by water like this, is you actually freeze it until you have the time to then basically dry the book out in a certain way to save the book instead of it being destroyed. And this was a massive project. They had to do this with hundreds of thousands of books. This was, you know, thousands of people had to come and help pack up books. Um, like restaurants and um, food-related businesses had to volunteer like their freezers for the books to be stored and froze so they wouldn't damage and be destroyed by mold and stuff like that. So the community response to this fire was absolutely fascinating. The, uh, the other part of the book kind of delves into like the current employees of Los Angeles Library and their, their background, what brought them to the library, what their goals are, how they help to serve the public, how they see the library system changing in the future, which was very smart because the people had so many positive views on how the library can make a positive impact on society, not just in Los Angeles, but anywhere, and I found that very inspiring. And the book also does a deep dive into the prime suspect of the case, what his background was, um, why he was a suspect, why he might have been guilty, why he might have been innocent. The author very much even states towards the end, like, she goes back and forth, uh, was he guilty, was he not, was it arson, was it not arson? Um, so this book does not draw a conclusion, it just leads you, and in some ways to draw your own conclusion on what you believe. But overall I would say like, if you love books, if you love libraries, I think the library book is a book you'll really love. Uh, it is so well written, um, covered such an interesting topic, delved into so many interesting facets of libraries that um, I am so grateful that I read this book. So I highly recommend you read the library book. Um, if you've read any you know, kind of good books um, lately on nonfiction on a topic that you normally wouldn't read about, let me know in the comment section below, and maybe I'll discover some nonfiction books that um, might surprise me that I might enjoy. Um, if you have it, um, go <laughs> support your local library. Um, see if they have, like, a friends of the library program. Get involved with that. 
libraries really need the community support to be successful, so please do that. And always, again, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the support. And happy reading, and I'll see you the next time.